Hi, welcome to the New Electromagnetism Applications Railgun Update. What you're looking at here is a force table, and the force table is centered around a very tiny little force sensor, which is, I'm going to push this ruler away. You can see the little metal disc into a little black chassis, and what happens is the, the nub on the ruler engages the little disc and applies force. The circuit on the top then converts the differential voltage because this is a a differential uh, this is a bridge circuit converts it into a linear voltage so that it can be read by an A to D converter or an oscilloscope or whatnot. Okay now what happened with the reason for the ruler here the ruler is actually riding on graphite rails here those are just simple two millimeter pencil leads taped down and it has a fulcrum over here this allows me to apply tension to the ruler and it magnify and magnify the force based on the force and lever arm stuff which many of you who've taken basic physics understand the reason for that and what I have here to calibrate it I have following along this little string over the pulley over the end of the table all the way down I have a a little calibrated weight set this way here I can apply a known force to the system and this will allow me to calibrate the table and know what particular voltage read from the circuit is responsible for a particular force. Now the beauty of this table is I don't always have to put tension here, I can put it anywhere along here so I can effectively magnify the force that I'm measuring because you know we may actually have some very very small forces and because this little uh, force sensor only has 30 microns of compression this stick virtually does not move and because it does not move I don't have to worry too much about friction it's pretty much all uh, what tension and I can I can apply tension to this side or I can apply force to this side of the ruler or I can apply force to this side of the ruler or tension to this side it gives me lots of flexibility in attaching you know tension or forces and allows a lot of flexibility in how I measure stuff. This over here is a little voltmeter attached to the output. Right now that little weight that's on there it's, it's reading about 558. If I take it off to go to a no load situation it should go to about 140 which is about right. And then I'm going to put it back on and I should go back to 558 or 585 whatever, whatever it was before I might have had the number backwards. And then I take it off and what I'm checking here is repeatability it goes back to 140 and then I should go back to 585 so and the delay there is the response of the ohmmeter or the voltmeter um, settling this particular force sensor the reason why I purchased it has a settling time in the microseconds for force measurements so it allow us to measure some very very fast forces okay the other thing that's going on is we're gonna have a problem with contacts. In other words, as the armature moves down the rails, we're not going to get exact perfect contact and we may end up having corrosion or rust or some other things that can prevent a good current from moving through the armature. And the other problem we're going to run into is because we're going to be using a lot of current, we may inadvertently spot weld the armature to the rails. And therefore we need something to put in between that will not only increase the ability for the armature to make electrical contact but may also interfere with any kind of uh, spot welding that might occur and so I purchased a number of, of conductive greases here's a carbon grease okay here's a silver conductive grease and that little red light that's just from the camera this is some other no ox uh, compound it's supposed to be conductive so we're going to do some tests of this stuff the other possibility is here are some more uh, graphite pencil leads. Okay, these are conductive. I mean, they're a little more resistive, but they're conductive, and some silver conductive epoxy. So what I may do, if we don't have, find success with metal on metal contacts, I'm going to use uh, graphite, and it may not be in this configuration. We can get graphite in a lot of different configurations. Use graphite as the contact leads and attach those graphites to the armature using silver conductive epoxy. 
So that's one of the other projects going on to support the railgun project is coming up with a way to pass current between the the source that which would be the rails and the armature and trying to mitigate the effects of you know bad contacts, corrosion that might interfere with the conduction and finally prevent or interfere with any spot welding that might occur. Also on the magnet side I've purchased some other magnets uh, and have measured them. These are the magnets you saw last time. These are the uh, 3 inch by 1 inch by half inch magnets which have anywhere between 14 and 15,000 amps. And I purchased some other ones like these rail magnets here. These are misleading. I thought that the edge currents ran along these narrow edge. They actually run along the wider edge. And so these are about 5 eighths of an inch thick, a little over a half inch thick uh, where the currents are and they're running around 7800 amps. And then here's another thinner magnet, the same dimension as the other magnet that we showed before except this is only an eighth of an inch thick and this is running about 3600 amps. Here is a little disc magnet, eighth of an inch thick it's running about 3,500 amps. So what I'm seeing with these neodymium magnets is the edges where the edge currents are are pretty predictable based on the thickness of the magnet. I even have a magnet that is one inch thick and it produces around 31,000 amps. So what we're looking at is it's about 31, 30 to 31,000 amps per inch where the edge current is. And that's a ballpark. It's not perfectly linear, but it's a good estimate. You can get a good estimate. So for every eighth of an inch, just assume 3,500 amps and scale it up from there and you'll be very, very close to what the real uh, edge currents are. We're going to be releasing more rules of acquisition and those rules of acquisition are going to be dovetailed with releases in ethereal mechanics. In other words, in the rules of acquisition are going to be cases where that particular rule of acquisition helped uncover or help identify something uh, fundamental about nature and science. And some of these things will be new releases, things I have not released before. And so there should be some interesting things on the way. Anyway, thank you very much. And it'll be another couple weeks before we have releases. Hopefully, the next two uh, weeks or a month will be the last of my crazy schedule work and I should be getting back to hopefully what would be a normal production schedule. Thank you very much.